In this video, I'm going to show how I rename an assembly with a user-defined attribute. Hello and welcome to CS Wilson Draws. I'm CS Wilson. I'm also just getting over a cold, so that's probably why I sound a bit nasally. But anyway, user-defined attributes or UDAs are one of the simplest ways to enhance your model, your drawings, and your reports. Learning how to use and incorporate them in your workflow is a definite game changer when it comes to working with Tecla structures. Knowing how they work and when to use them is a great skill to develop. This will be more of an introduction into the world of UDAs, kind of like the hello world approach, just to show the basics, but still have something functional when we're done. Unlike the original hello world program, which didn't really do much at all. I'll be using a predefined out of the box Tecla UDA and then show how to incorporate that into a template with some simple programming. If you're not very familiar with UDAs or template programming, then hopefully you'll find this useful. If you're someone who creates their own custom UDAs and has an advanced knowledge of template programming, then you might find this somewhat entertaining as I hack it to pieces. So with that, let's get started. In this example, I'm using Tecla Structures 2017, but this method should work on any version. What you're seeing here is a platform I've recently modeled, which is what I'll be using for this tutorial. There's several assemblies here, such as the support posts, the railings, stringer rails, as well as the stringers themselves. For this example, I'll be using this big honkin' frame that's made of wide flange beams and some angles. I've made a representation filter so it's a little easier to see. Assemblies can be created in a few different ways. You can use the weld command to shop weld parts together or bolt parts together using shop bolts or you can use the commands in the assembly menu and add and subtract parts as you need. And you're not really limited to just one of those methods either. You can use any combination in order to satisfy your particular situation. To show all of the parts in the assembly, go to the Inquire Objects pull-down and pick Assembly Objects. Select a part and all of the parts in the assembly will highlight. Yellow represents secondary parts and orange represents the main part. The main part is what I'll focus on right now because that's where Tecla gets most of the assembly information from. By opening the properties of the main part, we can see that the name is Beam, so by default that's also the name of the assembly. We can also verify that by switching to Select Assemblies and then opening the properties again. You can see here the assembly name is also Beam. It's in brackets to indicate it's the default value. Now I suppose the simplest method to rename an assembly would be to either modify the name of the main part or switch to Select Assemblies and modify the actual assembly name. Both of these work just fine, however, there's a couple of things I don't like about doing that. Number one, I like to preserve the part name, whether it's beam or angle or post or whatever. I have a lot of reports and templates as well as settings for single part drawings that rely on that part name. Secondly, changing the part or assembly will cause a renumber, which can sometimes complicate things. When possible, I do what I can to avoid a renumber after I've created my drawings although I'm rarely successful at that. With that said, I want to choose a UDA that doesn't invoke a renumber. Let's open the properties of the main part again and click on User Defined Attributes. The first thing that pops up is the Parameters tab. Pretty much anything here will cause a renumber, so unless you want that, avoid using Comment or the User Fields. Instead, I like to use the Notes tab. For this example, I'm going to use Notes Line 1 for the assembly name. So here I'll type Platform Frame, then click Modify and OK, and close the Properties dialog. To see if it took, select the main part, pick Inquire and Part. You can see the name of the UDA and its settings in the More section at the bottom of the report. Remember that UDA name, we'll need that for later. In this next part, your workflow may be different than mine, and that's okay. The principles in the process will still be the same, but you may have to tweak them slightly to fit your particular setup and workflow. As always, use the knowledge you get from here and apply it to your own situation. So now let's make that assembly name we just set in Notes 1 show up on the drawings and reports. I'll open the drawings list, and you can see here I've already created an assembly drawing for the platform frame. 
I'll load it so you can see it contains the platform frame itself with a few sections as well as a title for the assembly. The title is also a template and we'll come back to that in a little bit. Going back to the drawing list, I've also already created a multi-drawing which is drawing number 100 and I've linked the platform frame assembly to it. I did this by opening the empty multi-drawing and then right clicked on assembly and selected link drawing views with layout. By selecting with layout, it'll also bring in any templates you have defined in your assembly drawing. Here you can see the multi-drawing, which is a 24 by 36 sheet that contains the bill of material, the title block, and a few other templates that appear under certain conditions. In the bill of materials, I have a separate line for the assembly information, and right now the assembly description is beam, which is the same as the main part. Looking below the assembly drawing itself, the assembly title also shows the same name. In order to change those to reflect our new name using the Notes 1 UDA, I'll have to do a bit of template programming. To start with, open the template editor by going to File, Editors, and then select Template Editor. Once the editor is loaded, load the template you want to modify by clicking on Open and navigate to wherever your template is stored. I say navigate because there are actually several possibilities to where your template can actually reside. It really depends on how you're set up, and that's really a topic for a different video. So for this example, I'll let you navigate to your template. Personally, I keep mine in the model folder of each individual project since that's the first stop in Techless search order, plus any changes I make will only apply to this model unless I decide to physically copy it to another model folder or make it public by putting it in a place that's accessible to all projects. Once you're there, select the template. I'll be modifying the bill of material template first, so I'll select that, then click OK. This is the template for the bill of material we were just looking at on the drawing. What I want to focus on is the assembly description. So on the left, I'll expand the template, and again for the assembly. In this, I'll select main part. You can see that this row is a part row, and because of a rule set that's been applied, only the main part will show up here. So now I'll double click on description to bring up its properties, then click on formula. This is where we'll do the programming. There's several ways to program this, but the logic is pretty straightforward. I want to check to see if there's a value set in notes one, and if there is, display it. If there's no value set in notes one, which is the default, then display the name of the main part. I think most can agree that's probably the simplest logic path. Regardless, that's what I'm gonna use, so let's go code it. Right now in the formula, the only thing that displays is the name. And because of the row type and rule, what will be displayed is the name of the main part of the assembly. To start the new formula and check the value of notes one, I'll use an if then statement. If get value user defined notes one does not equal zero or some value has been set for notes one then get value user defined notes one which will display it and rather than typing in the name of the UDA you can also select the name from the attributes area the Notes 1 UDA is located near the bottom of this list under User Defined and Notes. For a text type UDA like the one we're using here, a zero value means null or nothing is set. And here's a pro tip, a space or empty character is not a null string. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Be sure to completely clear out the UDA if you don't want to use it. Next, we'll need to put an else statement in to tell the template what to do if nothing has been set for notes one. And in this case, we want to display the name of the main part. To finish it out, we just put an end f to complete the formula. Now that we're done, check to make sure that everything is good. Click OK, and OK, and OK, then save the template. Now let's go test it out. By loading in the multi-drawing, we see that the assembly description now displays the value that was set in notes one. But we also need to update the template for the assembly title below the drawing as well. So let's open that up in the template editor and fix it. Select open. The template I use for my assembly callouts is this one here. So open it. 
And on the left, you'll notice this row type is assembly and there are no rules set. So we'll have to keep that in mind as we work on the new formula. Now open the callout value field and click on formula. You can see that this one is a little more involved than the last one, but the logic is still the same. If a value has been set in notes one, then use that value, else use the main part name. So I'll start by copying and pasting the existing code, then paste it again so there's two copies. Now go to the top and begin the if then statement, except this time we'll have to add main part to the UDA. So if get value main part user define notes one does not equal zero then and then I'll indent these to keep things neat and change the value from main part name to main part user define notes one then I'll add an else here to tell the program what to do if nothing's been set for notes one which is actually the existing code and again I'll indent this to keep things tidy then finish it off with an end if. Check for errors, then click OK, OK, and OK, then save the template. Now let's test this one out by loading up the multi-drawing again. Here you can see that this now also displays the value of Notes 1. And it's not just about renaming things either. There's lots of things you can do with UDAs. Besides being useful for templates and reports, they also work great for filters in the model and callouts on the drawings and probably a bunch of other stuff that I can't really think of right now. So once again, I hope you found this video informative and if so, please give it a thumbs up on your way out. Leave a comment or question in the comment section below this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.